how dependent it is on the quality of the fabric. Because you can't do that if it's if it's light or pliable fabric. So it, you need so the quality of the fabric is important and how you, in how you can um, how it will work for you. And like these are these are Sorry to break in, but uh, we do have to appear in the next segment. Okay. That's okay. going to happen shortly. Um, okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Virtual hugs. See an option. You should see an option to go into a break room that says mirroring chat. Yeah, perfect. Slides. Is that Genevieve here? Yes, yes, yeah, I'm here. Ready to rock here? Ready to rock. Okay, so people are just staying in for this session, right? Okay. Very cool. Just looking who's with us here. Jane Chungerman, oh my God. Carol Silverman, oh my God. Wow. Reunion. Okay, so, all right. So, Genevieve, if you want to, are we good to go? So, we're muted out. Are we actually ready to do this? Yeah, we're we're ready to go. All you. Okay, hold. But you keep turning off your videos. So I know. Go. Okay, hold your horses here. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is great. Um, let's see. Time is just about right then. So I guess you folks who are there now, many of you have been at sessions today, and just were at the headdress session, which I caught part of, which is incredible. I am so. Uh, excited to meet all of you, many many of you for the first time. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in the Balkan teaching dancing and learning dancing world. Uh, so I assume people are going to be kind of coming in in the next few minutes. So I'll start a little bit slowly, uh, knowing that people are joining us. But so happy to have you with us. And Genevieve is doing the tech for me, my assistant, and she will be letting me know what people are chatting and, and um, sort of who's joining us and what's going on. So Genevieve, just let me know sort of what is going on in terms of people arriving so I can time things a little bit. So uh, welcome again to everybody, to though you this, this incredibly interesting community of Balkan music and culture and dance connoisseurs. It's fabulous to have you. I think we have a few Albanians with us, Mir Seervet, and uh, they will be joining, hopefully, if they can figure out how to get, yeah, all right. Um, so, um, yeah, hello, welcome, Mir Seervet, as we say in Albanian, and uh, I am Janet Reinick. I have not been in any of these camps, although I was part of the group that started Balkan Camp in 1976 in Mendocino. So in that, that was, the, that was the good old days. But in the meantime, I ended up living in Kosovo for about eight years, uh, for over a 16 year period. So from 1981 to 1997, right before the war, 
I lived in Kosovo for about eight years altogether. I did my master's in dance ethnology in Kosovo, studied the dances, then I did a PhD in anthropology, studying Albanian uh, culture and writing a thesis on migration and its effect on the sending community and culture. Um, and then I went back in the 90s um, as a mother with a, with a young son to do aid work. So I worked for Oxfam and International Rescue Committee in, in Kosovo for some years in the 1990s when things were really, really tense and tough and uh, basically everything that Albanians were doing was illegal and in that apartheid situation in Kosovo. And so, so we, we were able, we managed to build some schools and, um, and do aid work there in the 90s. So that, that's my, my love uh, is very deep for Kosovo and for Albanian culture. It goes very, very deep. Um, but for the last, uh, well, since for the past 20 years, I've been doing other things. I've been doing aid work. And I started a group called World Dance for Humanity. Um, we are a nonprofit, and all the money that comes in for our classes, I teach every day. I teach seven days a week world dance classes. And all the money that comes in for our classes, a little bit of it, very token. Reporting in progress. Very token amounts of money come in for World Dance for Humanity, but all of that money goes to Rwanda, where we have a big aid project with 12,000 people. So I haven't been so involved in the folk dance community because I've been doing this work in Rwanda. We started in uh, 2010, World Dance for Humanity. We've been doing classes on Zoom all through COVID every single morning at 10 o'clock Pacific time. So if you want to join us, uh, the link is in my materials to our dance class. We do dances from all over the world. And uh, today, for example, of course, we danced for Afghanistan and for Lebanon and um, that's what we do. We really dance into the world and, and what's going on in the world. That's sort of what we're about. So um, I'm so happy to now be with you just talking about Kosovo that I love so much. Um, I want to do a little survey of Albanian dance today. So I'm not coming here to teach a couple of dances. I'm here to do many dances, but also show you videos. So I know many of you are, you know, students of Balkan culture extraordinaire and know so much about it. Um, you've also learned Albanian dances from Steve Katonsky, some of the ones we worked on together, Steve and I, and also his work, of course, in Albania now, and some in Kosovo, um, and also from other Albanian teachers. But this is me, and this was my experience in Kosovo for eight years doing these dances, and um, so. I uh, want to say that mostly there's a lot of improvisation in Albanian dances. So the dance we're going to be doing most, you know, there's this dance which is just called Ktsim, which means to dance or to jump or to hop, or, but it's uh, an improvised dance and it can be women and women together, men and men together, women and men, um, or lots of people doing it together, one person dancing, but that's what we're going to start with. And then we're going to do some specific dances and as much as we can get to the men's dances. Um, in preparing to teach this today, like I said, I haven't been teaching a lot of Albanian dances these years. Um, but um, in looking at the videos that I prepared, I, I have 25 hours of video of dance and life in Kosovo, 25 hours. So we picked out some little bits and I do have a playlist of lots of Albanian dance and life videos, lots of weddings and things, and they're all available for you to look at. There's a link of the, that we're putting on the chat as well as in the resource material, so you can watch hours and hours of video, just clips. But today in the class, we did pull some little clips so you can see the specific dances. Um, but in looking at these, at these videos, uh, have to, having not seen them for a long time, it gave me such a deep appreciation for these Albanian dances, because as in the rest of the Balkans, you all know this in the countries that where you love, study, do dances from, life has changed so much in the last 10 years especially. And so many of the people that we knew are now in Europe, are they're migrants, and they've gone through so much. And when I see um, the women doing these dances and the men doing the very, uh, complicated, let's say, um, Okoya dances, for example, Kulchoya, they are such a, it's extraordinary that they're surviving in the way that they are surviving. It, it is quite incredible. 
these men who have been through so much and women in the war and its aftermath and moving and trying to get to Europe and all of this, that they are still, that the dancing has become this incredibly powerful part of continuity in their lives. So much has changed, the way they live, the, what's in their houses, what their houses are like, the relationships between people are now distant. Uh, it's all Facebook, basically, um, because people are living in different places. But the dance is something that is still going on. So a couple of the videos in my, uh, my video playlist you can look at are, are just from, you know, a week ago. And, and these epic, incredibly slow, beautiful dances are still being done. So let us now begin with Ktsim. So this is the basic dance. Again, it's done by women and by men. If you have any questions, basically while I'm talking, please put them on the chat and Genevieve will, will bring them up. Um, if you can grab a handkerchief, it would be handy. You might, a, a little towel or something or a hanky too, uh, that, that might be nice to have, have with you. So right away we're going to do um, some watching videos. So I have little video clips that we're gonna go um, kind of weave into the dancing today. So uh, just hold your horses because we're gonna dance soon. But first I want you to see Ktsim. So K-C-I-M, Ktsim. It just means this basic um, dance that we do and everybody does it a little differently. So my objective today in doing this workshop is to give everybody the confidence to dance to Albanian music and improvise and make it your own. And that's what it's all about. It's about being together being with your friends, hanging out, sharing this really rich, beautiful culture in your and doing and moving as you want to and moving and finding your way of moving within that style. That's the whole deal. So Genevieve, let us share the Ktsim video. Um, and uh, yeah, just we're starting out. Um, it's, a, it's about a five minute video. The other videos are a bit shorter, but um, we're starting out with this one because you, I, because it will give you the sense of, of how this all goes. The various formats for Ktsim, the various ways that it's done, combination of people. When it's done together in a, a boy and a girl, um, it's called Kshota, which is um, a, a special song and a special kind of flirtatious dance, like Rachanitsa becomes, you know, like many cultures. They, they take a, a dance and make it into a flirtatious couple dance. So you'll see that. But the funny thing about this video you're about to see, it starts with George Chittenden, the one, the only George, the fabulous Zerna and clarinet player who was visiting with Lisa and George were visiting me in Kosovo, I think about 1987. And so it just happens that he's he happens to be in somebody. So the Zerna you're going to hear at the beginning is actually um, George playing Zerna, and you're going to see women from Rubovo up in the mountains just dancing in their living room, just kind of hanging out because George is there and Lisa's playing a big, a big tin pan, and that sucks too. So let's watch this and let me know if you have questions. Here we go. Dark hair, yeah. <laughs>
with me, everybody? I hope so. Uh, so that's Katsumi. So let's do it ourselves. You see that it's done. It is, it is so the feeling of being Albanian. When you hear this tune, I don't know now who has joined us from Kosovo, but welcome. Um, let us uh, begin to do this, but it is it, that rhythm, just moving your legs, moving your feet to that rhythm is what it is to be Albanian, that, that sense of song and timing. And it's so much part of life, part of everybody's life, even as things have modernized. So I'm gonna tilt this down a bit so that we can do a little bit of dancing. So we're gonna go right. Yeah, you have Samet with us, Janet. Samet, 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 bunch of kids but if they still can basically pull it off that's that's the parameters they dress like a bride and then they are showing the bride wealth they're showing um, what has been given to them the gold and the jewelry and the wealth that's been given to them by their husband's family and all the things that are going on during the wedding and if you have young women doing it people are looking and saying hmm who could we what would be a good groom for this girl what would be a good husband so much is going on but the hands um, are unique to every woman. Now, many of the women, it's just kind of fingers together and loose, like this, like this, and maybe turn around in a circle or in and out. And I'm kind of here, I'm kind of have my fingers together a little bit, here and here, and in and out, and in and out. So everybody just try this. Don't worry about the feet right now. We're just feeling this groove with your hands like this and this, really subtle and soft, really the fingers together like this, subtle and soft like this. Now, some people do it a little more extravagantly in the ensemble, in the, in the stage versions. It's um, often done, you know, bigger, of course, with fingers out there and dropping the wrist on the downbeat. So we're going a rap, da doom, da tick doom, da tick da doom, tick da tick doom, da tick da doom, tick da tick doom, da tick da doom. I'm dropping my wrist on the downbeat like this. So, so far we've just had this little bit of fingers together really soft, which is the way I would say most women do. Some people do it out bigger like this. Some people do a little, a little ornamentation, a little bit of a roll here like this. Do a little bit of roll like that. You can also do it maybe at the top and the bottom. Like that. Um, and now when I do these, when I teach, I do teach um, scene in my world dance class. And when I do it, I'm, um, I'm always thinking of some woman in particular. Um, some people do it with one hand like this, and I'm always thinking of Ferida, my, um, my landlady when I lived in Pristina, 
part of the time. And she would do, you know, sometimes one hand very subtly like this, like this. Nuria takes it out like this, like this. And uh, Dusha kind of has a dip like this, the one that was dancing with um, George Zerna in, in Rugovo, she has this thing going on, kind of a kind of a bounce, a little bit of a harder bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. Okay, so we're just gonna do this to some different rhythms. Now, when you pick it up, when you pick up the beat and you do it in a couple, then it becomes a little one, two, three, and a one, two, three, and a one, two, three, a rafa ba ti ke da da da, a rafa ba ti ke da da da, and forward and side. So we, this is where we can add it. When we take the seam out and we're doing it as a couple, then we can call it shota. So if somebody gets together in a couple like that, a man and a woman, or in the video you saw two men doing shota, they were doing this dance of flirtation. Because in the old days, now not so much, but the women were in the women's part doing a wedding. Men were over there. The women and men were not in the same place doing weddings. And people loved it that way because they could really express themselves. Women were very free to express themselves if there's no men around. So, um, so the men in this case were doing shota because there were two guys who were pretty good dancers. And so they did shota by themselves. So then we have this step where we're going here and here forward and side, and forward and side, and forward and side, and here, and here, and here, and here. Or we couldn't do that little touch thing, that touch and back, touch and back, touch and back. So as, as other dance cultures, if you're doing the couple dance and you have a handkerchief, then it's a thing of expressing yourself with a handkerchief that at some point um, you take it from, from the other person. Okay. Okay. All right. By the Mirisha, no way, Jose. By the Kuyemori. Prebuches. No boy, Kosola. Hey, Mori. Near Servet. So we're just doing Ktim Milk Tupac like this. So let's start. We we're going to do it in a few different rhythms. So we have, um, let's just start. Well, I'm Bairam, perfect timing for Bairam to join us because this is a song. This is one of my favorite Albanian songs about the partridge um, leading, the partridge that is the lovely young woman leading the dance. So here we go, a little bit of Ktsim. And there may be a slight sound delay between Janet's dancing and the music, so just do your best to follow the, the beat. All right.
basic moves. You get the feet, you get the hands. Now that you've done a few different hand movements with me, so simple, so easy, but I just want you to feel and bring in Albanian, that feel, that melos, that, um, you know, that emotion, that love inside and bring it out then with the music in through your body. So let the music just wash through your body and let it come out in this easy little step but with full heart and doing the, the movements as you want to do them. So now that you've seen a few things I'm doing, now just make it your own. Do whatever you like, it, whatever expresses who you are with your hands, because that's what it's all about. Okay, so we're going to take a few different Marcia, rhythms. If you could tilt it down a little bit more, uh, some people are not able to see your feet. Oh, the, the feet, the, the feet. All right, feet, see them? There they are. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you yeah stay towards the back when you can. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So just let's do a little bit. Oh, this is for for Samet for people who are from Ferizai from that region near Vitia. Um, this is the girls' deaf playing. So this this thing called a daira or deaf. Many of you know it. Those who of uh, Balkan student of culture, um, you know this deaf. Something, it's called a def, D-E-F, or a daira, and it is in every Albanian home, at least it used to be on the wall, so any time you want to, you can pick up, a, a young girl can pick up the def and start playing, and people start singing, so you can have a dance party any time, and that's super cool. You don't need a band to do Albanian dance. You All you need is a rhythm or clapping or singing, but usually there's a daira involved. So what you're gonna hear now, we're gonna do the same thing, but now you're on your own, or follow me if you want. Follow exactly what I'm doing, or exactly do whatever you feel like. And um, we'll be doing this to a group of girls from Ferizai. Some of you, yeah, know that area. So um, it's a girl singing, a little bit of a different sound. Here we go. somebody in their house or at a wedding and you're feeling like yeah you can just kind of do this and get into the groove and everybody can do it how they want to do it all right let's do a little bit more um a little bit of this is a famous tune everybody in Kosovo knows um that was put um 
the stylized, but it's from Rugovo. It's what they call the dance of Rugovo, and it's beautiful. There's a feel, a little bit of flute, nice drumming. So let's do a little bit more. Ktsin, here we go. This goes out to Dusha Jevolekai in Rugovo. Here we go. So this is faster, more upbeat. If you've got a hanky, then, then bring it out because we're going to go rum bum ba dum bum ba take a step together, step, step together, step. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. You can do whatever you want. Go around the house and come back. <laughs> Don't leave entirely. But you can do it wherever you want. So imagine that you're doing it with me or with anybody you like, and you're going like this. A little bit of teasing with a handkerchief and then on your way and whatever feet whatever footwork you know that fits with the music that it feels good to you go for it here we go with shota You can just feel confident that you can do a ktsim, K-C-I-M, ktsim. Muktsu means to dance, to jump, to hop around, and that's it. Ktsim basically means a dance where you're not holding on in an open circle, where you're not holding hands, because that, that's called vale. So vale, V-A-L-L-E, vale means you're holding on. Ktsim means you're not holding on. So those are the big two types of Albanian dance. Let's do more Hatije. Now, many of you have, some of you have learned this from Steve Katonsky. I taught it to him, oh my God, I don't know, the 1980s at some point. And I think he's been teaching it. I don't know if Steve's here with us now, but um, anyway, I, the videos that you saw earlier were of lots of weddings. You saw a lot of women in weddings. So most, many, many Albanian songs are about the biggest, the biggest ritual, which is a woman leaving her family to go live with the groom's family. Now, obviously things have changed mightily in the last 20 years, especially, but 
um, before, let's say, the war, before 1999, or especially in the 1980s and backward, most women, they were patrilocal. Most women go leaving their, the people they grew up with, their village, their family, they go to live with the husband. They are brought in as what they call a foreigner, a stranger in behind the doors, you know? So there's a lot of ritual and a lot of song and a lot of heart and soul because all women go through this and, and uh, it's a, it's, there's a lot to talk about. We can talk about it later. I hope sometime I have two days to do this because this is definitely not enough time. I'm just giving you this overview. So here's a pantomime dance. Now it's, it's, um, it's a different song because this is more of a, a gypsy Roma a player who is hired, a woman who's hired to play deaf at a wedding. And you'll see this later in one of our videos um, where they kind of play their own uh, rhythm sometimes and the Albanian women sort of do their own thing while the really fantastic Roma deaf players are doing, are playing their deaf. So this is a bit of a different sound and we're telling a story. So we're, first I'm just gonna give you feet of course, you can do whatever you want, but here's a, here's a little putting it together. Step and touch and step and touch and. Step and touch and step and touch and. rock a dick it dock a dick it It's a nine if you're interested. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. A rap a dip a da a da a da a da a da da so we're gonna do that at the beginning. We're just gonna step right, right hand touch and left and touch and right hand touch and left and touch. Then walk in a little circle, right hand left and right hand left. So it's easy peasy, right? We're just going right, touch, left, touch, right, touch, left, touch. Then walk, 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 walk. walk. Then walk back a couple of steps, right, left. So you can turn to your left. You can do this down and down and down or up, down, up, down, up, down, or just walk whatever your hips and your legs uh, are told to do by the music. The music is very clear and very strong. So you follow it the way you want. But here's the dance again. We just go right, touch and step and touch and Step and touch and step and now circle out. Rum bum bum ba, a rum bum bum ba. Walk back, walk back. Then I'm turning to the left. So first I did a little circle to the right and now I'm doing a little circle to the left like that. So those are the feet. Let's do one more time so you don't have to think about it. All right, here we go. Rum bum bum ba, rum bum bum ba, rum bum bum ba. Rumpa, circle out. Rumpa, bumpa, a rumpa, deep a dumpa, dumpa, da, rumpa, bumpa. Step back, step back, then turn and turn and turn and turn and. Whatever you want to do, people do it differently. And uh, this is an unusual dance. I mean, um, not everybody does Moi Hatiji, but when there is a certain feeling about this song. So um, let's do it with um, the. Uh, about the words now. So first she's saying, uh, this is the bride. So as you could see, you saw in the video before that this is the way brides stand. Kind of with my elbows for my elbows like that forward, my hands on top of each other here. This is called standing divan, which means uh, the way a bride stands. So they stand like this for weeks <laughs> after they get married or later whenever they're being they have the bride role at a ritual occasion of any kind. If they're dressed like a bride, then they're doing this when they're not moving around. They're standing like this for hours, for days. This is a bride. This is Nuse bride. And this is Divan, which means standing like this. So at the beginning of the dance, we're making this movement like as she's talking about being a bride, okay? And then she's saying that they're going to dye her hair with henna. So there's, there's an explanation in my materials. You'll see this song, you'll see the translation, you'll see pictures, and you'll see a little bit about this. So this would be 
um, the, about the night of the henna, the, the night before a bride gets married. Her hair and nails are dyed, used to be with henna, now it's with fingernail polish on her fingers, but it's still a night of crying, a night of, of um, getting all of her emotions out so that she can stand completely exhausted and completely wiped out the next day she's ready to just do this absolutely silently because she's cried all night so the night of the henna is this thing uh, we're just showing the hair that is being being dyed red like this and then they're saying um aren't you so i'm doing it this way then we're talking about aren't you going to miss your brothers and your your family your your parents your brothers your sisters and they do this just to say don't miss you know your brothers and your family so the first thing we do is this the second thing we do is the red hair. And the third thing we do is don't, you know, you're going to miss your family. It's a thing they sing to make her cry. <laughs> That's what it's about, like this. And then she says, I become a bride and old age comes to me. I'm working so hard. So we do this or whatever, whatever ails you, you know, whatever you want to put your hands on your, because this is about old age. So first we have the bride. And then we have the hair, right? And then we have don't miss your family. And then we have I become a bride, I become a wife, and old age comes to me. And then I have kids hanging at my apron. Um, so this is the apron like this. I have all these kids all over the place hanging on me. That's what that's about. And then finally, and I have all the Argash Dime Hunger Book. All the workers come to eat bread. I have to make bread all the time for all the workers and the farmhands who come and I have to feed everybody. Oh, at the end, how I would love those beautiful clothes. Teshat mira sakisha dasht. Oped, how I would love to be in those beautiful bride clothes. Again, that's the story. So we're doing these foot movements and we're doing these, um, these hand movements too. So normally we could take a whole hour to work on this dance, but again, today I'm just doing a little survey. Um, there's videos you can watch of this dance. So let's just do the dance, just follow along and um, just kind of catch what I'm doing here and know what those things mean. Again, the bride, dyeing the hair red like that. You're going to miss your family, don't miss them too much. And then when you get, uh, you, you're going to become old, you know, my old age is going to come to me. And then I have all the kids hanging in my aprons, you know, fmeet, shum fmeet. And then we have book, megatu book. I have to pray, I have to uh, make bread for all the workers. Rup, rup, I'm kneading bread, you know what I'm saying? I'm kneading bread, that's what I'm doing. All right, so you do your own moves. You can make them up or follow me. And here we go. Moi Hatije.
um, I hope I, that's a dance again that would, you could take an hour learning it. I hope you caught on to what I was doing. So the verse, you do one of these step touch for the verse you just did, and then you get into the new part of the story, right? <laughs> All right, let's, Genevieve, if you don't mind, let's share that video. This is um, Shota Ensemble. I danced with them when I lived uh, in Kosovo in the early 80s. And uh, this is their little version of Moi Ha TJ. It's kind of a famous version. And then it gets into a hip hop version, which is just so rock and cool. All right, let's do it. Genevieve, let's see a two minute little video here. <laughs> of it you can you can kind of get down you know what I'm saying <laughs> get down with that version so I, I know that's a lot to kind of comprehend very quickly I'm sure a lot of you Balkan connoisseurs many of you have done this dance before but it's a very special dance and it tells an incredibly important story I mean again I could go on and on and I won't I won't talk too much but you know this dying of the hair with henna the dying of the hen right for the dying of the hands, it has this huge symbolic, um, it's a journey, it's the transition from girlhood to womanhood with that red, you know, the red, the red, and then the leaving the family, which is gonna make, you know, makes her cry. So she cries all night. I mean, you can imagine how cathartic this experience is. It's incredible. She spoke, like that so these and you know and the and all of the making of the bread that happens every day her whole life you know and then all the kids hanging by her apron so there's a lot to this story I mean there's a lot of heart and soul in it it's not just you know it's a cute little dance kind of an odd thing because it's in a 9-8 rhythm but you know it's got that boom ba boom ba 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 boom ba boom ba which is a very satisfying feeling I think that that rhythm, bum, ba, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. That nine is that nine. That nine takes all different forms in the Balkans, as you guys know. But this particular nine is very unusual. All right, let's do a little bit of um, Cheriace. So you all probably know this dance. So we'll do it very quickly. But I can't not talk about Cheriace because it's so much part of. Albanian culture. So vole, as I was saying before, ktsim is when you're doing just not holding on. Vole means you're holding on to each other when you're dancing in an open circle. So everybody knows one, two, step, touch, step, touch, one, two, step. So that's ubiquitous all over the Balkans. Call it different things, call it less snow, call it whatever you want. In Albania, Albanians for Albanians, this is called dancing. Vole also means just dancing. So mevazu to dance, we're, it means, okay, let's get up and do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna hold hands, we're gonna do this. Like they do everywhere in the Balkans, basically. Aram, bam, 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 bam. But when you take that a little faster, you turn it into what some of you know as Chaperlika. And in I in Opoya, part of Kosovo, they call it Sherianche, which comes from the Turkish Sheher. Sheher city dance. So basically, it's the fancy dance. So if you're hip to doing Sherianche, you're pretty cool. And it means like the city dance. It's like a little more cool than doing just this. And anybody who's a good, you know, good dancer can really whip it out and get really fast, you know, really do fast. So I'm going to start slowly. We're going to go right, left, right, two, three, left, 
two, three. That's the whole dance. So for those of you who are brand new to Balkan dancing, check it out. Those of you who've done this a million times, enjoy. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go right, left, right, two, three, left, two, three, right, left, right, two, three, left, two, three. And because we're in a big open circle, we don't wanna hang out in place, we wanna move. So it takes us around the circle because the uh, last part we do a little bit in front and then we're always thinking of moving to the right side. Here we go with one and two and one and two and one and two. Take a step, 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 two, three, step, two, three, step, 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 two, three, step, two, three, step, 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 two, three, step, two, three, like that. Now, of course, depending on the rhythm, the particular song you're dancing to, you might do a lift first, you know what I'm saying? So you might go lift, step, lift, step, lift, one, two, three, lift, one, two, three, lift. Genevieve, let's uh, prep that video. Let's show a little bit of Shelly Anche. Chuperlika, uh, Shelly Anche. Vale. All right, let's just show, just a quick couple, a minute or two of uh, showing it in real life. Okay, here we go. George Chittenden again on the Zerna. And Lisa dancing. Okay, so Bayram, if you are still with us, you will Bayram Chose Yehalam and Neve came apart to Ayush El Mazi. El Mazi is the Zurna prayer. This is a Kaaba Zurna. This is one of the biggest Zurnas in the world. You all know small little Zurnas that occur all over the Middle East and India and China and in the Balkans. But in Okoy and Prizren in southwest Kosovo, these are the biggest Zurnas you ever saw. These are Kaaba Zurnas. And that guy who was playing El Maz, uh, arguably the, the, the great, the, the best Zerna player around Kosovo was um, El Maz, Roma, gypsy musician. And uh, that was <laughs> George Chinton, and that was again during his visit, watching how they play, of course. We have a fabulous anecdote of, of George, George Chittenden, our very own George Chittenden. Who's with us here? Who's with us? Yay, George and Lisa, love you so much. <laughs> We had an amazing experience in Kosovo together. And George, so this is one anecdote of many sitting at the Hotel Grand in Pristina and teaching the Zerna players from Shota, the ensemble, you know, the, the uh, professional ensemble was Shota, and it still is. And their, their Zerna players were really clarinet players. So they didn't know how to circular breathe. So George Chitton did a sit in there teaching these Roma musicians from Kosovo to do circular breathing with a straw in a glass of water. I'm just, those of you who know the context, I mean, it was a, it was a great moment. Anyway, so here we, here we 
go. Let's just do a little. We're going to start slow. And, and for Bairam and everybody, we're going to do a little bit of Jamali Berisha, the one, the only fabulous dancer and uh, singer, uh, choreographer of Shota uh, was. And uh, this is and a fabulous singer. So this is a slow song. It's a little bit tossed. So for Jane Sugarman, I'll, I'll be, this goes out to Jane Sugarman. It's a little bit of a tossed thing where you have one voice in a drone and one voice with a melody, just like the Zernas are, right? So let's, uh, yeah, let's just have a little lovely moment of Shetty Anche here, okay? Here oh, we yeah, go. and if you want to tilt up again, just slightly, it's okay. like that, yeah, All get right. close to it. There okay, you go. are we good? Otherwise, everybody happy? Good? Yeah? Good. All right. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, go ahead. Let's just do, everybody, I'm... Most of you know this dance, but let's just feel the Albanian feel. This dance, you can't have Albanian dance around without doing a little bit of shetty on Here we go. Get up and bite on hide heads, hide cho, hide cho, balls all pak. Here we go. Um, that is called Rugova, and it's a it's a beautiful little little groove here. Let's do a little more Chaparral can, and then we'll move on. Here we go. so out of the loop for so long but for those who joined us late later than noon um I, i'm janet <laughs> and i lived in kosovo for eight years over a 16 year period so through the 80s and 90s up to the war and um yeah so this little song in the garden with the orange trees here comes the stag, here comes the deer, and this rascal, the rascal comes. He's going to look among the girls and watch out. He might take one away. It's that kind of deal. Again, it's about weddings. They're all about weddings. So, 
a garden with portocals, with oranges, of course. So let us, now this, I'm making up this dance a little bit. Show to the ensemble also sort of had a made up dance to this. Normally you, you can play this, you know, you can play this on your, on your desk at home, or your diadet. Um, this is a small one, but it's what, the one that says still survive. Um, so you can just do ktsim, you know, you can do nebashe, or you can just do vale right now. After this workshop, you now know that ktsim in Albanian means to dance without holding on to other people, this improvised little dance, or you can do it holding on, and you can just do what you might know as a less no, less no or something. It's called vale. So there's ktsim, which is not holding on, and there's vale, which is holding on to other people, like this, you know. So there's ktsim and there's vale. And then there's making up dances, <laughs> which I know, uh, you know, Balkan, you know, those of us who live places um, and know the style, you know, I think people are now saying that, well, I made up this dance. And I think that's great. You know, I mean, let the, let the culture spread, let everybody feel this beautiful music. So here we go. This is my little, my little version of Nyebashi on my Porto All right, choreographed by me. <laughs> so look. Sorry, you're going to you either want to tilt down a little bit or move further back. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, cut off. Yeah. All right, thank Just you, Jeremy. I'll see this. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go walk two, one, two, three, one, two, three, walk to the other side, walk, walk, one, two, three, one, two, three, do it to the other side, right, left, right, two, three, left, two, three, do it to the left with a one and a two and a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's straightforward, right? Now here's the cool part. We're gonna go a one, two, three, a one, two, three, a one, two, three, four. Okay, so check this out. We're just gonna go little triplets forward, just little thing forward. We're just gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, back, two, three, four. One, two, three, or you can do a little bit of one, two, three, four. A little bit forward and a little bit back, two, three, four. A little bit forward. All the people in my daily world dance class know this. We do it as a Brazilian groove and a, and a salsa groove. We do this all the time. African groove. Um, but we're going to add some arms. So here we go. Right and left. I'm going right and left. My arms go both to the right and both to the left. As we come back, we're going to go like this. So now here's the clincher. Wait, if you watch the videos at the very beginning of this class, when we were doing Ktsim, you saw all these women doing this thing. You saw many times a woman, the bride taking someone's hand and going like this. This is called Temena, and it's a gesture of respect, one woman to another. Um, it's an incredibly, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful ritual, and it's done all the time. But when a bride is standing alone, and you also saw this in the video, the bride standing alone, you, I'm sure you were wondering what the heck she was doing. So here was a bride standing alone. And all of the people, all of the groom's family, if she's arrived at the groom's house, 100 people are there. She's standing up here. She's been standing, and what's that word? Divan, which means she's standing solid, showing her strength after having cried all night and, um, and now she stands this way to show her strength and modesty. Um, then she does this thing very slowly. And down. And it's called temena. And it is that gesture of respect for everybody who is gathered. Everybody in this new family she's going to have. And it's a very big deal. And in Opoia, no poi chishboin temena si korkon you know, point it's very special in the mountains up there. Though it's extremely dramatic, and the women do, um, you know, mm. and then when they're done, they just kind of, I don't know what you would say, just 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 collapse a little bit. So it's this big effort. They're pulling all together all the strength they have left from what they've been going through, and they might do, you know, a few of these and then come down and then do it again or something. And everybody has their signature way to do it. So it's a really, everybody's waiting for the temana. And then there are songs of the temana. Konga te temana, 
for, for um, you know, that accompany this amazing gesture. So when we're doing this dance, I'm going like this. I'm gonna go up and then I'm just gonna do one over the top. I'm here and I just roll over my hands and come down with the back of my hand to the floor. I'm just going like this and like this, like this and like this, okay? So here's that going forward part. One, two, three, and a one, two, three, and a back, two, three, four. A one, two, three, and a one, two, three, and a back, two, and take it to the right. This is a little bit of instrumental part. We'll just do a few lifts. We're gonna go step and here. We'll just walk forward. Here, just easy walks. Walk, walk, step, lift, step, lift, step, lift, walk, walk, step, lift. All right, let's do it. Nibashche on my porto kale. Here we go. It should be a volley. It should be holding a hands. A lot of people together doing this. So you now know what is a ktsim without holding on. Vole is when you're holding on in an open circle. And shota is when you take that ktsim and you kind of rock it out, sip it out, get bigger and, uh, and more like that. That's shota. All right, so now um, we are gonna go beyond time. I, I have a, you know, 75 minutes. I'd much rather have two days because that's what it takes. But can we show kohat shkort? So I haven't done much with men. I haven't done any men's dances. And of course, the men's dance tradition in Kosovo is, is rich. It's gorgeous. It's incredible. Um, and uh, there are these cycles of men's dances. So in the East Golok region, where we have Zumriya from, in honor of Zumriya, um, the Golok region in the East, um, whereas Jilan and that area, also Ferizai, that whole eastern region, they have their own cycle of about six men's dances. And if we have time, we'll do one of those. They're pretty crazy and fun, and, and uh, they really get going. They have a zurna, but not as big as the Opoya zurna. No way. Konzula atyengola vet padmat volen se na Opoya. So then we have Opoya. We also have Podrunya. We also have these other regions where they have a cycle of maybe five men's dances. Uh, Opoya has 11 men's dances. It's called Kulchoya, Kulchoya, sword dance. Um, 
And I wrote my master's thesis on Kochoya, well, on Opoya and all the rituals and traditions and everything I've been talking about. That's my master's thesis. My dissertation is on Kosovo, the general um, Botkuktim worldview and uh, what Albanians think about reality and how it all works uh, in their minds, like that. Um, Bayram, who is with us today, helped me very much with that, and um, all the, everybody helped, it was a big project. Anyway, Kochoya is 11 dances. Okay, and it comes, I will, I haven't yet, but I will add to my materials what these 11 dances are. Some of them are done shoot, which means um, not holding on like this in a circle of men, maybe five men, maybe seven men, even three, five, seven men together going around in a circle. So this is an extraordinary, um, it's an extraordinary dance form. And again, it would take me two hours just to teach it. I hope we can, maybe I can come to Mendocino or something and we can really do the whole um, men's dance cycle. So there are, it starts rubato with no rhythm at all and you're just following, you'll see these videos in a minute, um, following the leader and the Zerna and the lead player are really doing a thing together because this is rubato, slow, slow, slow. Then it goes into a 12-8 and then it goes into another 12-8, then a 2-4, 7-8, 9 9-8, back to a 12, another 2. So it's all these different rhythms. But the basic step, and you, most of you Balkan folk who study the Balkans know this basic form, which is just lift, step, cross, step. Lift, step, cross, step. Lift up, 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 rakatita, rakati, pa, 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 katita. Lift, step, cross, step, lift, step, cross, step. Lift, step, cross, step, lift, step, cross, step, lift. Okay, so Genevieve, let's, um, uh, let's, we're gonna play a video with some of this. Um, the women also do this, so Tahir Bega, is one of the Opoya songs, a beautiful song dance. It's done in a circle to, uh, that's basically this, lift, step, cross, step, lift, step, cross, step. I mean, that that's the basis of all of these men's dances and some women's dances in Kosovo. It is also in other parts of the Balkans too. You know this, you know this combination, lift, step, cross, step, lift, step. So it can be done so many different ways, repeated measures, different rhythms like that. So the women of Haas, now um, I'm going to, this this video is, um, I guess we've narrowed it down. I had it much longer. I wanted you to see the whole culture of Haas, but I'm. this is just two minutes. But again, I have hours of video of Kosovo village life, weddings, dances, and the link is on my materials page and also it's on the chat here. Um, is all of my videos that I, well, not all, I have 25 hours. And so this is, these are clips, just clips. But this one we're gonna show you, Haas is a region. So Haas, H-A-S, it's called Haas, and it's in um, Western, um, my directions, yeah, Western Kosovo. It's not far from Jako, Jakova, those of you who know the area, uh, maybe 20 minutes in, and it's this whole cultural world. And what's distinctive is they used to wear these wooden platforms. All the women have this extraordinary, I think the most unusual, one of the most unusual costumes in the Balkans. It has a platform here that comes out the side, a very useful thing. We can get into that discussion later what that's all about. But um, it's, uh, it's a very, it's a, all the men are, were the bakers in Kosovo. So the men were gone and the women ran the show and it was very difficult, very little water, very little wood. So they carried things on these harnesses. Anyway, they are really into this 12 -8. And by the way, that costume is gone after, after the war, the looms were burned, the, the, the um, invaders came and burned the looms and skalpas mas, yam tui fo por has, por regioni hasit, mas vjuta skalpas vek ma, e chat, chat, chat vesh ka uhu kret, komplet sapo kuptojune. So, the, that costume is no longer happening, but up until the 1990s it was happening and arranged marriages at 14 years old and it was a very interesting place. So this is just two minutes of what I'd like to show you at least in an hour of them. Here we go. So this is the women of Haas 
doing, and I'm, I'm in the pink dress. You see me often, there's one dress I always wore, so you can tell that's me. But we're doing this rapati pa pa da pa rapati pa rapati pa pa da pa da pa da pa. That's in the 12 8. So we got 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 1 2. So you can you can see it's a 7 and a 5. 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 1 2. That was seven and five. That makes twelve. Rapati pa pa di pa 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 pa. Rapati pa pa di pa pa. So the women of Haas you're going to see now use. They just they are so solid in the particular way they do this. Again, this is Mehmet. This is a dance everybody does everywhere in the Balkans. But this is the this version of it. So here's the trick. When I'm doing this and I'm moving around, my same arm as same leg are kind of attached. Very unusual, because usually it's like opposite, you know? But in this one, I'm going rapati pa pa da pa 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 rapati pa pa di pa 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 One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three. We do that again. We got rapati pa pa da pa arm and forward hand uh, like this. So you just have to follow along. It's a very particular way of doing it. All right, let's just uh, watch this for a second. Haas video from Haas, the region of Haas. Wait, uh, just a second. I want to I wanna point out that these the, you're going to see these tambourine, these Dida players on the left. I think they're in the video. And they're sort of playing in a different rhythm. It's always that way when those Roma musicians come to weddings, the women. They kind of do their own rhythm. And the women, the village women who have paid for them to come, do their own thing on their own rhythm. So we're starting, you're going to see these Haas women do Ktsim. And then you're going to see them do this 12. Here we go. So, so you just saw a lot of things. That was all hus. You saw the women doing that, what we've been talking about, that lifting and crossing dance in a 12. You saw them doing then a, a tzim, or going like a ram, ba bam, ba, ram, bam, ba, bam, just that simple tzim in a circle. So this is the first time today we've seen this doing in a circle, which men do and women do, just going in a circle and you can do it till the cows come home literally <laughs> till the cows come home and it just feels really good you know what i'm saying it just feels really good like that you also saw a little bit of shota again just because it was Haas, and i'm showing you the uh you know a girl and a guy if there's a girl who can dance and a guy who can dance then they do shota and it people love it it's sort of entertaining 
Um, so yeah, all right, let's um, let's do this now. We're gonna. I know Zerna music, especially on Zoom. I don't know about listening to Zerna music. Again, these are the Kaba Zerna, the big Zernas from Southwest Kosovo. They have that deep feel. We gotta get you a Kaba Zerna, George, if you haven't already. <laughs> Kaba Zerna. Um, and, but you know, you really have to be there in person because it may sound screechy to some people. My cats had to listen to all these videos and they almost disowned me. But when you're there in person, there's nothing like Zerna music and Lyodra, the big drums, Lyodra. Um, when those are dancing, when you're dancing right with those drums and with those Zernas, I mean, that sound, that sound takes you over entirely. Those of you who have done that in the Balkans, they know what I'm talking about. It sounds screechy on Zoom It's <laughs> when you're listening to a recording, but when you're there, it in completely invades your body. And it also, someone like Bayram who's with us or anybody from uh, those cultures, as soon as they hear those melodies, it means Albanian, it means who they are. It's their identity. It means this is that feeling, that melody and that sound. This is my identity as a human being. This is who I am. So it's very profound. All right, let's do a little bit. Jim, Jim do you play that 12-8? Um, that um, yeah, the, uh, the Haas. Yeah. Now this is Kulchoya. So it's what I was talking about, the men's dance cycle, Kulchoya Preopoyas from the region of Opoya. And there are fabulous dancers. And I have to say that when I was looking at these videos to take, find which out of a hundred clips to show you, it's very difficult because it's so beautiful. And I thought so much of these men who have been, you know, they survived the war. They got it together. Many of them were migrants, maybe 30 years in Germany and sending money home. And now they built a house and now they're retired and they've gone through such a life, but they're still right now doing these dances right now. Um, these old epics. So we're going to see a little bit of this, this Kolchoya now. And again, if I can uh, do a in-person class sometime, we'll do the whole, we'll do more of Kolchoya. Um, it's, it's so beautiful, and it's still being done today. Bairam sent me a, a video a week ago. I put it on Facebook. Just gorgeous uh, from, a, from their neighborhood. So please, Genevieve, let's see Kolchoya from a few different points of view. Here we go. I'm wearing the first one. I'm wearing a black and white shirt. I think we start with that. And, and uh, somebody said, well, how come you're the only woman? Because I got to be an honorary man there because I was studying their culture. And it's really great if you're an anthropologist like me to uh, be a woman because then you can enter the men's world, but you can also intimately enter the woman's world. I think it's crucial. So let's see Genevieve a little bit. Opoya, the region, the mountains, on the Albanian-Macedonian border. So early in the morning, just to give you a feel for, for the old Opoya, every morning the woman starts out 5 o'clock in the morning making the bread. And the first thing in any Albanian household is sweeping, sweeping the porch in the area. And then you have the girls singing at a wedding, getting ready for a wedding. This is in Belobrad.
So the first dance, rubato, it's basically no specific rhythm. That's okay, Jenny, let go. And there is El Moss again, the great zone to play with George and Lisa. This is in Prizren. And here's that crossing dance, just like the women did in Haas. Part of Kolchoya. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. All right, this I picked up. This is not my footage, but this is a dance we're going to do now. Gish per gisht. And uh, this is from Zgatar, one of the villages in Opoya. And I just love it because these men, I mean, you know, that they built that house with their migrant remittances, you know, which everybody's doing all over the Balkans and the whole world. But the fact that after all these years, they come home and this is what they do. So let's listen. Let's see this Genevieve a little bit, this next one. So again, the crossing dance, but in a nine rhythm. So this one uh, was from a wedding in February in 2021. And I just, I want to 
these are just workers, probably many of them at that generation, manual laborers, you know, in, in, in Austria, Switzerland, and Germany. And they come home and do this graceful, beautiful dance. I just, and looking at it again for this, for this workshop today, I just, I was so emotionally struck by what these guys have been through, and the women, obviously, as much. And then coming back and doing these slow, beautiful, graceful dances. It's really quite extraordinary. So let's do a little of it, what we just saw. So I, Steve Kotonsky has taught Gish for Gisht. So one of the dances in the cycle um, that is, is in the 11 dance cycle is number seven in the 11 dances. And it's called Gish for Gish because you hold on like this. So in a long line of people, you're all holding on with your pinky and you're gonna go walk, two, three, touch, back, two, three, touch. Sometimes they go walk, two, three, and one, one, two, three, and two. One, two, three. So basically they're in a long, they're, they're, they're together, they're attached with these fingers and they go one, two, three, and back to and progress forward one two three so super simple it's just like that it's called gisht per gisht finger to finger like that and then they you just saw in the video at the end there they break off into doing ktsim which we started with today ktsim in a circle so they they're they're continuing on they started this this thing with gisht per gisht and then they break off and they're doing this in a nice beautiful circle all just traveling counterclockwise and when they get ready and it's time and they can all feel it they come to the middle of the circle and come out again like that so if i'm in the circle and like this then i'll come in here and come out here and some people put a little different step in there but anyway, I hope that at some point we can do this live in person with some real music and um, and you'll feel the experience of this very subtle and graceful dance form. So let's do a little bit of it right now, Genevieve. Um, yeah. Honestly, we have a time in the morning, you have about five. Or okay, five that's, five. that sounds good. Thank you so much. So here we go with Gisht for Gisht, finger to finger, part of the Kolchoya 11 dance cycle from Opoya. Here we go. time a little bit went over time but this is Golak so I just want to show a different kind of men's dancing this is from the eastern part of Kosovo where is Jilan and Ferizai and Vitiya that over there and so this is a just show the video Genevieve and then we'll just do the dance or you can do it with the people there um, doing while well, the video is going if you want so this is another men's dance from the eastern Kosovo from Golak here we go showing you the, this is another mountain range. So just giving you a little feel for the, the place. It's getting you in the mood here.
is Jilan, which is in that eastern Kosovo area, from some of you know Gnilana. Jilan, and this is called Jilanka. All right, so here we go. Rub at the bum, rub at the bum, rub at the bum, bum, bum. Here we go. I don't know how this was for you because I'm not, I haven't seen other, uh, you know, Balkan camp things lately. I haven't been to a Balkan camp since we started the one in Mendocino in 1975 or so. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if this was, how this was for you. So please do let me know. I'd love to do this in person together. George, bring your Zerna, get a Kappa Zerna and we'll do it up. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, all the materials are on my material thing. There's galore lots of videos. So if you want to sit back and watch a bunch of a bunch of Albanian videos of all kinds, a lot of a lot of life of these families and people. And the, reason, the reason they're on publicly on YouTube is because these people are now I hadn't shared them before, but now they're out there. And so the families whose weddings they are are seeing them. And it's really important to everybody because a lot of the people in the weddings, of course, have passed away. And these folks don't have as the countries you guys work in. These folks don't have photos of these people, or especially not videos of, of the, their parents who have passed away. So these videos are so precious because of the people in them. Um, so I just got a face, somebody saw this last one where we were doing the Kochoya. So I got a thing this morning on Facebook, it was their wedding, and they said the guy, the lead dancer in the first Kochoya, he passed away, but the other, you know, I wanted to talk about those people. So anyway, it's a journey of heart and soul. I invite you to World Dance for Humanity. Again, those of you who've joined us late, I, I have a nonprofit called World Dance for Humanity. We teach, I teach dance class seven days a week, five days on Zoom, two days in person in Santa Barbara. It's dances from around the world. It relates to what's going on in the world today. We danced for Afghanistan, of course, because of the Taliban moving in and whatever is going on, that's the dancing. We do a lot of rock and roll, a lot of get down, a lot of Motown, a lot of, a lot of kind of get down and groove and have a, just being together. We were together every day on COVID. I've taught every single day since COVID, um, the lockdown in Santa Barbara, March 19th, 2020. Every single day we've been together. We invite you to join us for no fee for free or give something and all the donations go to Rwanda where we work. Thank you so much. Are there questions or do you guys need a break? <laughs> Thank you so much, Janet. This has been extraordinary. There is lots of love for you in the chat, so make sure you save it. Or Genevieve, please save the chat uh, for Janet. And thank you both to Janet and Genevieve, who's been working behind the scenes, who has played all those videos for you and giving you all the links. We so much appreciate you being here, and we all want to dance in person.
person. Great. You know, you guys, I have to say, you, Polly and Rachel and Leanne, you guys did an amazing job organizing this. I mean, hats off. You did a fabulous job. I am, I'm so impressed. I think this is awesome. And I'm so stoked and so privileged to be able to be with you guys all today. It was, it was fabulous. So let's get back in touch, you guys, and let's dance. <laughs> all right. Have a good yeah, afternoon. You're Thanks, so everyone. You're so oh, California. I know. What am I going to do about that? Anyway, Shum Fun and Vienna, guys. Nice nice to... <laughs> 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 uh, I love you. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank you, so everyone. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Janet, go ahead and leave the meeting. Sorry, okay. sorry, Holly. Janet, go leave the meeting. Recording stopped.